Okay, that was good news. Um, got, uh, they say that, that according to uh, track phone, that the phone I've got, see the reason I'm kind of freaked out about the track phone I've got, it's got like 800 minutes on my phone because I dropped it in the water and so I'm freaking out that it's going to actually die one day like real quick. And he was saying that uh, that you can you get a new phone and then call the track phone people and then they'll give you all of the uh, the minutes back on your new phone. So what happens is that, that uh, you get minutes on these phones. And I use it just as an emergency kind of a phone. This is Rodney. Hey man, hey I'm coming into town. I'm on. The, I was doing a video about track phone, and then my track phone rang. So you're on. You're going to be on video, except no one's going to know who you are, Roberto. <laughs> hey, I'm coming into town, man. I got to get a battery for my uh, for my camera. You want to? You want to get together? I'm going to be in there in about uh, 45 minutes. You want to do that? Okay. Uh, as soon as as soon as I get the as soon as I get the uh, the battery, I will give you a call and I'll be on my way. Okay, buddy. I'll see, I'll see you in a little while. That was my buddy Roberto. And so, you're familiar with Roberto if you if you watch my videos. If you're not, he's well, he's my buddy. He's like 73 years old. He's the the coolest 75 year old person in the world. I mean, he, the guy is. He's awesome. He's a great person. He uh, he was a guy who basically when I when I split up with my ex-wife, I was living where I'm living now. I couldn't take it out there. I mean, it was just like so lonely. I and mean, my God, it was unbelievable. I was a lot younger then. I was like 35, I think, somewhere there. So uh, I ended up in the university area. I met him, and I was sleeping on his floor for a while. So. I've known him for a very, very long time. Hi. So, going back to uh, going back to Albuquerque, and this is the Panasonic Lumix FZ28. So, I got to go get a battery for it. See so that, that little strip mall thing right there. It was a little strip mall thing back there, back in 1970, I think it was in 74. We lived in around that neighborhood. And they were building that. And it was, uh, it was up, it was a frame construction. It was a little strip mall back there with about 10 stores in it or something like that. Fairly large thing. And they had, they had the framing up. And then we had these tremendous winds and I drove by the place. It was like uh, it was like somebody threw out a uh, a box of toothpicks. The whole well, it's not that dramatic. It was basically like the whole thing was just like crashed. So I guess they they probably went in there and stood it back up there and braced it. And obviously, it's still standing to this day. But man, that thing got totally wiped out by the wind. I think it's really interesting that, that New Mexico has got uh, the world's largest supplier of uh, cactus and succulent seeds in the world. And my buddy knows them, so we'll go down there and uh, we'll go down there one day and do some videos down there. Instead of being busy watching where I'm going, I'm busy doing videos and miss the freaking turn. Okay, there it is. I think it was 34.28. So, you know, it is what it is. But when the guy, you know, he put he put it in the he put it in the thing. The camera just popped right on, man. I mean, it was it was dead. Okay, so we're going to uh, see Roberto now. I'd call him on the phone, but he's got a track phone too, like me, and. Uh, cost him like 10 cents just to pick up his freaking phone or 10 cents to get his messages so he knows I'm on the way and it's, it's about the right time frame so he'll be there but it's really good now I want to thank the people that sent whatever you sent 
because that 34, whatever it was, you know, that's what I'm trying to do is to, if I can break even on this stuff, I mean, I've got to make money. There's just no freaking way around it. You know, I'm going to be talking about money for a while because it's on my mind. Everything is starting to stress me out. I, you know, my car, I love my car. It's a yeah, 95. It's, uh, how old is it? Uh, 15. It's 25 years old. Is that right? No. No, it's 20 years old. Yeah, it's 20 years old. 95, 20 years old. And so I'm driving back and forth to Albuquerque and I'm starting to freak out. Now, it's, it's not like, unless I've got something to worry about, I mean, there's something wrong. It's just, it's a nightmarish situation. I don't understand why I am so fearful and have so many freaking worries about stuff that I don't need to be worrying about. But I am. So anyway, I'm going to go see Berto and we're going to go get a bite to eat. I'm really pretty hungry. It's uh, 12.53. <sighs> this guy right here says Rayleigh Imports right there. Rayleigh Imports was the first company that I know of, maybe the first company in the world, that started importing hishi. You know, I told you about the Santa Domingans. They, they make this hishi. They'll take seashells and grind it up and uh, they'll take seashells and, and damn it oh well they'll take seashells and, and cut them into squares and then drill a hole in it and then put it on a wire and uh, I can't do that and then they'll grind it and make uh, these little Basically, they're little miniature, they're like discs. It's like a, a little disc, and you have these multiple discs to make up a necklace. And that guy back there, Rayleigh Imports, as far as I know, he was the first person to take that, that information and take it to the Philippines, where they have lots of, lots of seashells and lots of cheap labor, and started chem coming back, bringing that into the United States, and basically put the, put the kibosh on, the, not the kibosh, but put a serious hurt on the uh, Santa Domingan uh, style of jewelry because that's that was that's their trip. And so that's that was a long time ago but that actually happened so that's what happened. And they also started making Zuni. Zuni jewelry is uh, primarily it's like a it's like a, like a like a parquet floor like you know parquet work like you, you see like little tiny it's mosaic except it's more anal than than a regular type of mosaic that you would see. It's very, very like parquet-ish kind of thing. And uh, the Zunis made uh, that kind of jewelry and they started making that jewelry in the Philippines it's because the, the, the uh, American Indian jewelry was so expensive that this other stuff came out basically as like a costume jewelry kind of a thing. But in a lot of cases, it was just as good or better than the stuff that the Indians were making, which was, you know, which was not, not good for them and not good, uh, then they had to have all kinds of laws saying you can't, uh, because people were selling this stuff, you know, for whatever they could sell it for. And they have, they, the, uh, everybody got together, and whoever everybody is, got together and, and put the kibosh on. You know, you have to, if it's labeled Indian jewelry, it's got to be made by Indians. And there's another bicycle right there. Another, uh, that's where I need a nice telephoto lens. But uh, it's got, that's another, bicycle where somebody got got killed on a bike right there I showed you that video that's out by my house and then there's this one here so I guess the cyclist in Albuquerque put up a white bicycle it's good it's good to see this kind of thing it's got the person's name on it uh, because it's a reminder to cyclists to be careful it's a reminder to uh, motorists that know what it is to be careful a lot of times, cyclists can get themselves in situations, you know, you can't play with cars. You just cannot play with cars under any circumstances. Give the car a freaking right away. Don't get upset, don't start yelling, don't start screaming at cars. Just, just don't do it, you know. Just, you know, play, try to do your best to play by the rules. Now, when I was a cyclist, and I'm not telling anybody to do this, I don't, you know, do whatever you gotta do. But like say for example, kind of the stoplight right here. If I was in that lane, 
if I was in, if I was, you know, so there'll be some idiot making a video coming up to the freaking light, or somebody that's drunk or, or quacking their kids or whatever they're doing, and run over you if, you if you're sitting there at the light. So I always like either got off the freaking street, or if I pulled up to a stop to a stoplight or a stop sign, and everything was cool, I went because I did not want to be whacked from behind. Because you know what, you know what they're going to say to the cops. You know, you'll be dead or in the hospital. They'll say, "Well, I, I didn't see him." So, no, I always got I always got out of the way. I just went through a stretch of street there. There's another, more signs. Boy, they got a lot of garage sales on this street. And, you know, it's like garage sale city here or something. Now this freaking light, man. There's a light up there. We're two blocks from the freaking light. I don't get it, man. I don't think I want to sit here for two. No, I'm not going to sit here for two blocks worth of sitting in front of a, sitting behind somebody with a light. Just go a different route. You know, when you're born to be a rebel, you're just a rebel. I'm not gonna sit there and wait for two freaking blocks worth of fucking traffic to go through a stupid light. And that light, I don't know what's going on, but it's not good. There's a there's a, a park. Now we are at the uh, at the street where the where the light is, right there. So we've got we've got to get through these two people, and then we're we're on our way. Here comes a little tiger. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see it. Damn it! That's why I need a that's why I need a telephoto lens. So I can get little pictures of this, because the guy's got a, he's got an orange shirt on and his kid's got like a little tiger suit, tiger uniform. You know. It's kind of fun, you know. I like this kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Roberto was telling the story about when he lived in San Francisco. There was a guy who had a, dressed up in a bunny suit, and he would just be—he would just stand around. He wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't do anything. He would just stand around in a full bunny suit, with her ears and everything. And he said, after months and months, it just turned—it turned, it turned uh, totally. That's <laughs> all filthy and dirty. I think guys, you know, a homeless guy or whatever in a freaking bunny suit. I mean, you can imagine what that looked like after a couple of weeks or a month or a year. Oh man, anyway, we're here. We're gonna have another excursion with Barito, man. And thank God I got the the uh, the battery and it wasn't the camera screwed up or some, something weird. I mean, just, that's all I needed. You know, the battery's bad now, $30 fucking or whatever it was for the battery. But thank you uh, for those of you that made that uh, less of a burden. Okay, I'm gonna go in here and See what we're gonna we'll see what Roberto's got into. I'd uh, say, Roberto. <laughs> oh, that's not you. <laughs> I thought that was funny when Scott said that they thought that was Roberto. Hey, Roberto, I know you're in there. Come on out of there. I know you're in there. Shut up. Okay. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Elaine. Elaine, absolutely. All right. I don't know if my camera, I don't know if my camera was on or not. I was telling Berto about, he mentioned the word that that was gnarly. And I said, uh, I wouldn't be throwing around snarly, uh, gnar, uh, uh, gnarly too much if I were you. And then he says, yeah, well, I should have been throwing around snarky for you or some damn thing like that. Is that what you said, Berto? Yes, exactly. Damn it. He got me on that one. He got me good. You know, we didn't write it down, but describe what it down. Uh, going to the temple uh, with uh, Montezuma. Yeah. 
and uh, what they used to do is they used to kill, they used to kill the people inside the temple, not like, uh, like. You want to wave for Bear Tail? Huh? You want to wave? Where? To the camera. Damn it. What? Nothing. Forget it. I don't even want to speak to you. You're just using your minute stuff. Just using your minute stuff. Just using your minute stuff. Oh, look at that. I don't know. I'm going here to check this out. I'm going here. To check okay. That's some nice trompe loy right there. Oh look at this, this is a little little gang banger. Oh that's it's like a mini me gang banger kind of vibe. Oh look, there's uh yeah, this is oh, there it is, it's mini me. This is uh what's his name and mini me as gang bangers. I can't see the screen, so I don't know exactly what you're getting. I'm trying to, to do that, but it's freaking hard to see what's actually happening. That's the comic book store, and this is the boot and shoe repair. It's really strange. There's a boot and shoe repair place. Well, it's out of business now, but I can still remember the the smell of the the whole thing. It had a completely different, obvious. Thing. Look at this. This guy. This guy right here is a. Uh, he's some. I think he's a Mexican. I think the guy with the pipe is a Mexican guy. Anyway, this is the. Uh, the comic book store. This is where, uh, what's his name? Sheldon Cooper comes to get his books when he's in Albuquerque. Sheldon Cooper comes to get his books when he's in Albuquerque. To keep the people at still for about. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! You're going to jail. Don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. Here, here, sit right over here, sir. <laughs> A free, a free clean getaway from right here. Go for it. There was a, there was a, uh, there was one of these doors. Uh -huh. these, it was like a hole in the floor, and it was in this. this there's a little castle that's, uh, that comes off of uh, the Vatican, off of the St. Oh, wow. Peter's, yeah. and it comes down. Let's see which direction. It, well, it's coming this way, and then there's a little hill, and the, right across, the, right across from it is a. Uh, there's a river that a little river that runs by. I guess the Arno, and yeah. then there's a little bridge there. And I was up in that thing, and they had a they had a thing like that that just went down all the way to the river. Oh, wow. But they, you know, it was probably just for fetching water. Yeah. It wasn't for you yeah, know. Else, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of cool. So, do, are there like spikes down there or something? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't tempted to check it out. So. Uh oh.
It's actually, Thanks, buddy. It's actually a tunnel that goes all the way to the university. Uh, it is like a, it's like a, it's like a slide. That'd be cool, though. It that would be, be cool. cool. Hey, I gotta go get something from down yeah. there. I'll be back. You could probably make more money with a slide because it costs you a half a million dollars to do it. <laughs> You'll make it back so one day. Yeah, one day. Well, that's the people who built it were before us. And yeah, good for us. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now we're dead. We got all the money. The thing needs that two million dollars worth of repair. Sorry, buddy. Now you can use it as a death trap. Yeah. Just uh, sign the waiver before you go into it, and you should be all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun, if man. You get the ca if Thanks, man. Dated, then, yeah, your own fault. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, that's fun, man. That's cool, though. At least you go. That was cool. Cool. That's the Vatican. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty intense. Yeah, that is. It is. Thank you. Thank hey, you help. hey, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. All right. Yep. That was great. The guy showed me his books, didn't he? That guy gets to do a lot about it. Well, they got, um, got one issue on Pass Gordon. Pass Gordon? Yeah, the Sims did it. We used to have it in the New York Times. Way back then. There's only one left. You know how much it is? How much? 25 bucks. 25 bucks? Holy for, moly. For, for a little, maybe about 10 pages. But the original artist who did that. And then, and then I had him look up uh, the artist for Barbara Ellis. Look at this thing, man. This is, a, this is yeah, a, look at that. It's like it's a Mercedes, apple. yeah. It's a candy apple red, man. That's it's a nice, pretty nice car. That's a nice color. That's candy apple red. Man. That's a custom color that they're starting to use on regular. Well, we learn something about comic books. Absolutely. That was a good comic book uh, excursion. Excursion. But uh, he doesn't have any of that early Barbarella artwork by that Jean Claude. Well, I forgot his last name. Van Damme. No, Barbarella. Jean Claude Van Damme. No, no, no. He's that. You mean Jean Claude Goddamn? <laughs> No, that's not his name. John Claude, goddamn. Come on, that's not his name. That's not his name, dumbass. <coughs> it's like, uh, what was it? Oh, Sh Shazam's. Solomon Hercules. S H Hercules. A Apollo. C Zeus. Yeah. What's the, and then A, what's the other A? I don't know. Oh. Got Apollo. And then there's uh, the last one is Mercury. Where you have Shazam. Shazam. And, and he, the guy that did it was Captain Marvel. Captain he's Marvel. The one that he's, yeah, when he was a kid, he used that word Shazam, and he made it turn him into Captain. I think uh, I think Billy the Kid's mother is buried in Silver City. Hey man, how's it going? How are you? Good. Here's one. That was the guy from the jewelry store. Oh yeah. See, this is interesting because all the letters in this in this uh, mural are hand painted. Yeah. And then you look at his signature, and it's like. Looks oh, like it's a, a stencil. It's a stencil print. That's funny, man. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. But rest, you know, he could have signed it with, you know. Hey, you see that? See but, those? See those hands right there? Yeah, yeah. That's funny. When, when I was when I was living over uh, when I was living over by the by the cemetery when I first moved here, yeah. I got I went and asked the people because they had a, they had a there was a row of uh, yeah. of garages or I mean walls that were that were facing out on this area where I live. So I asked the people that live there if I could spray their wall. And I went around and put, uh, put handprints all over the freaking wall. I think oh, you should go oh, check and see oh. if they're still there. Where? It was over where I lived. When I lived here before I went to, uh, before I went to LA. Oh, no. Over there by that place? 
Yeah, by that. No, but no, no, not that place. By that. This is before, before I left to go to L.A., which was. Uh, no, no, no. I know. I know. I haven't been there. Oh, okay. I saw some kind of a handprint over there. Where you no, this was this was at uh, by the cemetery. American Sikhs. American Sikhs. American Sikhs. They, they, they have a bunch of Sikhs over there in uh, where is it? Uh, Colorado. No, above Santa Fe, Española, I think. Yeah. What was the name of that guy over there? The the, the Sikh guy, Yogi Bajan, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's got some good products. As a matter of fact, I'm using one of his products. What is it? Breathe. Uh, oh wait. Not breathe deep. Breathe deep. And it's for your lungs and stuff. That's for like if you uh, smoke a lot of herbs. Oh, let's go see this. It's good for your. It's good to, for your chest. Where are you going? Right here. I want to see this. Oh, Hillary. I think Hillary is in some kind of trouble. Oh yeah, she's got, yeah. She's got a little scam. Using some, what, bombs or something? That's like a little motel that's over, over up on Central, up the street. What does it mean? Is it? I, well, it looks like it. I was this guy saw his mother's uh, pin cushion and he goes, hey, I'm going to make a big, big one and just put stuff in it. That's kind of a neat thing. Those are kind of like surreal. Yeah. Without the there being there. It definitely is a, is a surreal uh, concept of bringing back surrealism. Well, how do you like that? Well, how do you like them apples? Well, how do you like them apples? Well, those weren't apples. Those were... Those were maidens. They were what? The maidens. Maidens. All dressed in white? All dressed in white? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All dressed in beige? Maybe they're talking to some guy up there in the balcony. <laughs> they're probably out on lunch. That's great. Oh. No, it's Saturday. They, maybe they... Oh, it is Saturday. You know, I think they get it Friday. There's a... I was walking down the street with Bershaw and I see this bottle cap on the street. And there's this woman that I met who uh, works at this, at this uh, jewelry supply place. And she uh, was telling me that she got a... I don't know if it was a patent or something or other. For, for being the person, to, the first person to ever to make a piece of jewelry out of a bottle cap. The first bottle caps, when they came out, yeah. they had a little, they had a little uh, piece of plastic. Well, it was, it was a cork, like oh cork, a real thin cork. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we used to do as kids, to take the cork out, yeah, put it there, and then stick the cork in. Oh, to make it. Oh, yeah, and you have a pin. Oh! That's one of the first pins. Oh, that's cool. But they don't have any corks anymore. I don't know when they got rid of the We can spin cork. in it. Here, spin in it and put it on. See if that'll oh, work. we got to have the reason why is because the cork yeah, yeah, I know. Held, it, cool. held it against the material. So you can wear it. We had all kinds of pins. My buddy had pins all over. Oh, that's funny. You know, but they don't have any, they don't have corks anymore. With them. Not too many people know. About that. About the cork, the bottle cap pins, way back in, uh, I think it started in the, as early as the 30s. We got one, they uh, stopped putting on those little thin corks. Cork things? They, they were kind of almost like. I don't remember of, the cork things, man. Yeah, what you kind of felt like uh, paper, but they were really real thin cork pieces. Oh, of okay. And, you know, That's pretty cool. You know, to keep it airproof, I guess, back in the back in the day. Yeah. I think it's a 1940s thing, because I remember as a little kid, I would I would have these little pins on me. Oh, that's and fun. Take a, you got to kind of be careful with your yeah, little yeah, knife. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's kind of it was glued on, kind of like, but 
be careful. Then it pops out. Oh, Didn't cool. Do this. You got these Why don't you take this and see if you can make one? Well, you need to have, well, you can do it if you got. Well, you get a little piece of uh, whatever. Cardboard. Well, cardboard would work. use a piece of cardboard. Or a little piece of leather would work good. Or you want a piece of leather. Anything that's kind of roundish that'll fit there. Yeah. You do that and then get that piece and put it in and see if it holds. Yeah, all got, right. Uh, you got, uh, yeah, people. A copper, copper glass, uh, glass and copper experiment. You got If you're going to do that, you got to jazz it up. Like those guys that did uh, that alternative art that we saw? Right. It went up and said, I heard on radio that they're doing that. They're jazzing up with uh, Mount Auburn.